magic is mostly tackled in its practical manifestations and ritualistic components. Yet these aspects underlie a theoretical framework which informs us about the philosophy and belief system of those who practice it. Stay tuned, my friends, to find out the philosophy of magic. Hello everyone, I'm Angela and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll address first the main theoretical approaches to the understanding of magical practices based on the works of Wouter Hanegraaff and then in the second part of the video the philosophical foundational elements underpinning magic. So let's move on to it, shall we? As Hanegraaff points out, there are essentially three main theoretical approaches to magic. The first one is the intellectualist approach, based on the works of armchair anthropologists E.B. Tyler and James Fraser, which deems magic to be based on the error of mistaking an ideal analogy for an analogy that occurs in the tangible reality. Tyler and Fraser endorse the evolutionist theory according to which Time moves towards progress, a general improvement in all human conditions, including knowledge, social structures, and the overall understanding of the world, as well as its mechanisms. They therefore deemed magic as a practice associated with an earlier, primitive development of the human understanding of the world. It is important to highlight that when Fraser mentions magic, he refers to ritual acts based on the law of sympathy, which means that things can act on each other at a distance combined with the law of contagion, which implies that things which have been in contact retain a connection to what they have been in contact with. Thus, I can use my supervisor's glasses, which have been in contact with them, to affect their perception or view of my PhD thesis and see it as brilliant instead of rubbish. In this example, the glasses were in contact with the person I wanted to affect, as well as the part of the body primarily involved for the intended purpose. This is the law of contagion associated with that of sympathy or similarity. Magic is here based on hidden analogies and correspondences, which connect all things manifested and whose knowledge will allow the magician to interact and recreate their reality. In this view, magic is contrasted with the unhidden, plain, measurable, causal mechanisms of science. These are also core concepts in hermetic philosophy, which would deserve a video on its own, and is rooted in Neoplatonic philosophy. The second is the functionalist theory, and focuses more on ritual practice. It's based on the theories of the French sociologist Marcel Mauss and Emile Durkheim. To understand magic, they don't contrast it with science, as it happens in the intellectualist approach but rather with religion. While religion is a belief system practiced by a number of individuals, a group, a church, magic is more of a private practice, more individual-based than group-oriented. Even when magic is practiced in a coven, it still retains a more private nature, where only a selected few are allowed. This was of course theorized before the spreading of Wicca, and contemporary pagan witchcraft, which might challenge such a dichotomy, as I would imagine. The third theoretical approach is causality versus participation, and it's based on the works of French philosopher Lucien Levy Brule. This is another case of understanding magic in contrast with science. While science is in fact grounded in instrumental causality, that is, the idea that measurable phenomena will be in a relation of cause and effect, the occult sciences endorse what has been referred to as reification of symbols and analogies. Reify means to make it into a thing. And this is what happens here with magic. 
the world is seen as permeated by non-causal correspondences, where the magic practitioner is not a mere observer or a measurer, but a participatory actor and interactor. I find it interesting to notice how the theoretical approaches to magic are always trying to grasp magic in contrast with either religion or science. I believe the reason as to why this occurs is due to magic being somewhat at the fringe of both religion and science. It's not quite a religion, but presents religious elements. And it's not quite a science, but encompasses some of its methods, though so with different premises and applications. So can we attempt together to lay out the concepts and beliefs on which magic is grounded, based on the aforementioned, as well as on my own field research among pagans, shamans and witch practitioners, I can infer the main philosophical elements, underpinning the belief system of someone who practices magic. The first being correspondences. Things are connected by invisible ties. The belief that everything is interconnected through occult forces, hidden ties, and the magician is the one who is able to unravel them, interact and play with these invisible connections to get very visible results. Such a connection is created through the use of symbols and analogies. By learning the secret correspondences between the microcosm and the microcosm, between the human and the over and above human world. Since every little thing is tied to another, the magician has to learn which is connected to which in order to manipulate the fabric of reality. Second, physical contact equals lingering connection. Things which have been in contact for a significant amount of time maintain a lingering connection to each other. Thus, even after the two are separated, they can still influence each other. Correspondences between things intensify after physical contact. Three, like attracts the like. There is a sympathy between things and actions which resemble each other. Since a walnut resembles a brain, it could be used for a magic spell to improve one's focus, for example. This applies to single objects as well as to dynamic actions, the mimesis or enactment of what the magician wants to manifest in their life is believed to attract that very event. Three, immanentism. The world in which the magician lives is populated by spirits, deities, demons and so on, with whom the magician can interact, establish relationships and get help. In some cases there is an animistic view, where everything is believed to be sentient and alive, whereas in other instances only a few are sentient, but every element of reality is still in a state of interaction, whether it be active or passive. This is connected to the re-enchantment of nature or re-enchantment of the world, which has become a buzzword in academic literature and that I also mentioned in my videos on the New Age movement and on paganism. I find it to be quite poetic and well suited to the concept. 5. Multiple realms of reality and the possibility to travel through them. There is not just one realm of reality that the magician can experience, but multiple ones. Whether it be the astral plane or the non-ordinary reality, the wider picture the magician has of the world is made of multiple layers or realms, and journeying through them will cause the magician to encounter spirits of various nature and gain power and knowledge. Six and last one, occult experiential knowledge. Knowledge in the world of a magician, a magic practitioner, is based on experience. The one the magician gains, as well as the experiences shared by other practitioners or elders. Depending on the tradition, this may or may not occur as part of an initiation process. There is also some kind of 
inductive methodology employed in magic, a set of experiments, so to speak, trials and errors, which lead the magician to progressively learn what works best and what doesn't. This is one of the reasons why magic practitioners often note down their workings on a journal or a diary, often referred to as a grimoire or a book of shadows. And finally, knowledge is believed to go beyond the realm of the five senses, as well as the limits of rationality. And hence, we may say that it is, in fact, occult. This concludes today's video. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I always love to hear uh, what are your thoughts, so this is no exception. If you like this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notification bell so that you won't miss anything out, and as always, stay tuned for all the academic fun. Bye for now!